time in the history of the Dominion, Canada has an army formation in the field. Canadians eagerly welcome the news. Now the story can be told. Previous to Canadian troops fighting as an army, Lieutenant General Creerar moves to France. His task is to prepare for the transfer of his staff to the theater of war. Canadian Army headquarters was slated for the invasion front from the time it was established in the spring of 1942. Since last fall, the staff has worked on specific plans and preparations for the present campaign. Now is the time these plans go into operation. On board the Canadian destroyer carrying General Creerar, a church service is held. Prayers are offered up for the success of the great operations which lie ahead. With the 1st Canadian Army on the left, the 2nd British Army in the centre, and the Americans on the right, the attack is launched. Under General Montgomery's supervision, the 1st Canadian Army wins its spurs in the attack against the Caen Hinge, the prelude to Paris. Elements on strength of the 3rd Canadian Infantry Division march past on inspection in Normandy. After distinguishing themselves in the lines, the divisional commander takes an opportunity to congratulate some of his troops on their good work. Major General Keller inspects the men who contribute so much to the winning of the war, the infantry. Backed by all the other branches of the service, it's the Putzlager who invests the objective. All arms are organized to back up the man behind the gun who takes and holds the ground. During a rest period before the next offensive, the CO sees his command at close range. He passes on to them information regarding future plans. In this way, everybody is in the picture so that he can play his part in the great pattern which spells for the Allied nations victory. In the Canadian Army, there is no dragging the lad with a toothache to the dentist. The gentlemen with the forceps are mechanized. They drive up to the patient in a fully equipped dental clinic. No matter what happens to the bicuspids, there's a dental officer right there to put them back on an operational basis. The best part of the Army dentist's office is the bill. There just ain't no such animal. No stalling the dock off until next payday. This work is on the government. Now, now, you don't have a thing to worry about. This won't hurt you a bit. Just relax and take it easy. Doc will have that meddlesome molar out of there before you can say shickle groove it. Skilled dental officers have been specially selected from all parts of Canada to give field service to man on the battlefront. Recruited from the cream of the dental profession, the Army D.O. treats each patient with the same care he would receive from his hometown dentist. A D.R. speeds a newly made denture to dental company headquarters. Even the dental workshop is mobile. The most intricate jobs are handled on wheels. The Army may march on its stomach, but it takes good teeth to maintain perfect health. With his tailor-made food choppers all polished up, Johnny Canuck eats everything, even Army dog biscuits. Back in Canada, rationing of meat has been suspended. At least temporarily, there is more than enough to go around. With such an announcement, cattlemen of the Dominion might be expected to reduce their stock. But on the contrary, they are reporting a bumper year.
At a typical roundup in southern Alberta, this year's beef crop lives up to the well-known reputation of prime Canadian beef. of Canada's rolling plains, the ranchers are driving their endless herds to the railroad siding. From Canadian prairies goes the most vital of all war foods to the soldiers and civilians of the United Nations. In forward areas, Royal Canadian Engineers construct pontoon bridges to ferry equipment across rivers. Tactical obstacles become highways when the bridging crews go to work. Constructed from parts which resemble mechano sets, the floating bridge will support even heavy armor. A vital aid to the drive across the Orne River is the pontoon bridge. It enables Canadian and British tanks to move into the tactical picture en masse. Through its use, General Montgomery is able to command the front by bringing his armor to bear in force on the enemy flank. Flash! Beetle tanks are used against Canadian positions in Normandy. They made their first appearance last winter in the Anzio beachhead in Italy. Miniature tanks filled with high explosive are directed at dug-in machine gun nests with scant effect. They are directed from the German lines by remote control equipment. Most of them are blown sky high by our anti-tank guns before they come anywhere near their objective. Flash! An important part of our supply lines is the salvage unit. With the tremendous amount of guns and ammunition necessary to fight a war, salvage of useful equipment eases the strain on production. Shell cases and ammunition boxes are only some of the things which can be reclaimed for future use. They are carefully collected into dumps by a salvage crew. The gigantic task grows in size as the campaign broadens. The salvaged equipment goes back through the supply routes to be used over again. Army shows entertain frontline troops in Normandy. With typical Canadian inventiveness, theaters are set up in some unusual locations. The Windmill Theater is established in a large cave which was formerly a Nazi strong point. Accommodating a thousand spectators, the show goes on despite heavy shelling. Typical of makeshift stage construction is the theater erected by the army show for its invasion review. In a sheltered valley, the troopers set up their portable stage and carry on with the performance. A real treat is army entertainment for troops just out of the line. They relax and forget for a few moments the gruesome business of war as the dance goes merrily on. Laughter 
the cheers and hand clapping show the appreciation of Johnny Canuck for the entertainment provided by his brothers and sisters in arms of the Canadian Army Show.